That, of course, is Woody Guthrie's classic anthem, This Land is Your Land. The 1944 master recording is among Smithsonian Magazine's 101 Objects That Made America. Smithsonian curators selected them from the institution's 137 million artifacts, resulting in a special edition of the magazine on sale Tuesday. Joining us is Richard Curran, Smithsonian Undersecretary for Art, History, and Culture. Now, that's a title. He's the author of History of America in 101 Objects. Richard Good morning. Good morning to you. I'm trying to imagine the fights in the Smithsonian conference room and how you get 137 million items down to 101. Not easily. And, and of course, at the Smithsonian, all our curators, and we have hundreds of them, right. and scholars, they're very passionate mm -hmm. about what they deal with. So everybody wanted their objects in. But we also let the American people vote in a way. Mm -hmm. We get 30 million people a year to the Smithsonian. They go to certain objects, gravitate to them. So we had to have those. We also had to Icons of the American experience. Think of the Star Spangled Banner. Today in football stadiums around the country, people are singing, oh, can you, oh say can you see, right. and singing about the Star Spangled Banner. We have it in the Smithsonian. That's one of our 101. I love that things like Barbie and the Singer Sewing Machine made it into <laughs> this 101. I know your favorite was Neil Armstrong's spacesuit. Why was that? Well, for one, I mean, here's this almost mythic thing, that, uh, this item that allows human beings to walk on the moon. Who, who would have imagined such a thing was possible? Now, when it was first designed, it was designed by engineers. It was supposed to be fiberglass and hard. Right. It was a guy thing. That would not allow Neil Armstrong to walk on the moon. What was necessary was a suit that gave him flexibility. So who won the design competition? International Latex Corporation, right. otherwise known as Playtex. Wow. Neil Armstrong took a large step for mankind, but even a bigger step <laughs> for ladies' girdles and underwear and flexibility. God bless him. All right, who knew? Uh, second, Lincoln's top hat on the list. Very yes. interesting. Was it the only one he wore? No, Lincoln had several top hats. You know, he was six foot four, so this gave him extra stature. Uh, and he wanted to stand out. Some people were worried that some people would shoot at him <laughs> when he stood out so much. Uh, but he wore that top hat. It gave him a kind of respectability and standing. This is the top hat that he wore on that when he went to the play at Ford's Theater on April wow. 14th, 1865. He took off the top hat, put it next to him on a chair, sat down. Of course, after that, there was the assassination. So this is really connected to history. It has a black band on it, too. And that black band is very distinctive because that's a band that he put on the hat to recognize his mourning during the Civil War right. for his son, Willie, who had passed away. So just as the country was mourning, so too was Lincoln personally mourning. You guys picked the famous portrait of George Washington by Gilbert Stuart. Now, is this the same portrait that's in the White House? Well, that's an interesting story. Uh, this was done in, in 1796, uh, and this is the iconic portrait. It was actually sent to uh, England, and we had to acquire it back. Um, there's three copies of this, one in Brooklyn, one in Philadelphia. The one in the White House was probably not painted by Gilbert Stewart. It's the one that Dolly Madison rolled up. Mm -hmm. So there's a good healthy debate, talk about curators, between the curators at the right. White House and the Smithsonian about how original well, this is. one is. We want to run through the list, rest of the list pretty quickly here if we can. But, uh, Muhammad Ali's gloves and robe. Which fight are they from, do we know? Well, the, the, the robe is from the thriller. In uh, Manila? Not, I'm sorry, the, the rumble in the jungle. Jumble. The wrong jungle. rumble in the jungle. Well, also, also on the list are, are uh, props from Hollywood, R2-D2 and C-3PO from Star Wars. Well, these shows that robots have personality. I mean, I think that's what George <laughs> Lucas did. But are those did. the original? Are those the original? Well, the several originals, because when you're making a film, you have several versions. These are actually costumes, so actors got in these and wore these as costumes. Fabulous stuff. Richard Kieran, thanks so much. It's a great list. Thank you. A lot much. of stories.